is Max McCready, and uh, I play the piano. Uh, I'm David Bowden, I play the bass. And I'm Stephen Anderson, I play drums. How does traditional Scottish music influence your creative process and the music that you make? Well, I think that um, obviously <clears throat> we went to college as jazz musicians, we sort of trained as jazz musicians, and that's the music that uh, sort of technically we know best, but I think when you live in Scotland or grow up in Scotland or whatever, um, it's very hard to escape the influence of uh, Scottish traditional music, which especially if you um, especially if you actually like it as well. Um, so I think it sort of feels natural, I think musicians throughout all of kind of jazz history have been taking their own uh, culture and uh, injecting it into, into the jazz that they play. I think the most obvious example would be a lot of Norwegian jazz in like the 70s and the 80s. Uh, that sounds that sounds very Norwegian, I think, because um, it's kind of taking from that that specific culture and that kind of folk music. So I think it's kind of almost natural in a way that uh, Scottish music takes from that. And it's kind of been happening for for a while, I suppose, uh, since probably a, since probably this musician called Colin Steele started doing it. That would have been about the 2000s and stuff, but. But it's, uh, to me, it's odd that it doesn't happen more, actually. So um, it feels like a very natural fusion, I think. Yeah. Um, and for all three of you, what do you think has changed for you since your album um, Cairns yeah. and uh, Forest Floor? Um, it's, hard, it's hard to say. Uh, it sort of feels like not lots has changed but also like a lot has changed um i suppose like we do i think the sort of what we've been able the gigs that we've been able to do and the, the sort of time that we've been able to give ourselves to work on stuff is has changed a little bit i feel like i have more time to practice i don't have to do as much uh, other stuff that isn't uh you know gigs that i want to do i suppose um that would be the main thing that's changed in changed in my life i think so. yeah i think it's funny so sort of, as a jazz musician particularly because even if you're sort of doing quite well, like you're not famous. So, you know, you kind of, you go away and you do nice things, but then you come back and it's like, oh no, this is like just super normal still, which mm -hmm. is kind of a nice thing, actually, I think really. It's like, uh, you still just have kind of, I don't know, it's, so it's like things change, but then also they really kind of don't also. Mm. So yeah, it's nice. It's like you get weird juxtapositions. Yeah. I mean, certainly we've been able to do a bit more traveling and things like that. Mm -hmm. So the gigs we've been doing, like coming here and doing these sorts of gigs, uh, we're playing Zurich this week. Um, that's been amazing. And yeah, I guess we've been able to go to sort of like, uh, we got that last album got nominated for the Mercury Award. And then so we're able to go to be in circles, which we wouldn't usually be in or something <laughs> yeah. like that. So um, yeah, I think for me, mainly just the traveling, I guess, um, has been, been opened up to a lot more opportunities like that, yeah. which has been great. Yeah, where are you planning to play gigs in the next um, few months? Just all around Europe or...? It's kind of all around, yeah, in the next uh, month or so. I think most of our gigs are in the UK. We kind of have like a bigger UK tour, um, first in the Scottish Highlands and then kind of in and around England and finishing in Edinburgh, I think. Uh, and then after that, we have like just various... It's, it's a little... It's kind of sporadic. I think jazz jazz tours, a lot of the time, it's not... It's not necessarily like gig after gig after gig it can be like you do you do like a week away and then you come back and then you do like another couple of days and then you come back or whatever um but we're going to uh we're going to the netherlands quite a lot in the next uh couple of months uh firstly to utrecht and then to rotterdam for this festival called north sea which is uh, very exciting and I think in the summer also places like Oslo and potentially Italy as well, just various places. Hard to it's hard to remember that all like off the top of your head to be honest. Yeah, mm -hmm. and in terms of touring and like especially in Scotland, um, can you tell us about the conditions for working musicians there, and like in terms of venues and things like what's it like? Um, I think that uh, I think playing in Scotland as a jazz musician maybe it's still a little bit tricky. Um. Scotland has like a really a, a lot of like really really good musicians. Um, it's a very very strong scene musically, I think. Um, but in terms of like the the infrastructure, maybe it's not there as much as other countries yet. I think it can get there. Um, if you look at a country like Norway, which has got uh, not to bang on about Norway all the time, but that's got uh, 
the same population as Scotland, and yet there's about 40 different jazz festivals there. Whereas in Scotland, there's just five jazz festivals. It's, it's kind of, Scotland operates on a smaller scale, but it's not, but that scale is too small for the musicians, the amount of good musicians that are there. I think with Norway as well, they have the support of the government and have quite a lot of funding right. and things like that, and their infrastructure has been there uh, for quite a long time, and also this kind of Scandinavian movement of the <clears throat> uh, like Jan Christensen and mm. uh, these uh, musicians that lived there they made a huge impact in the European jazz scene um, I think that helps Norway quite a lot as well uh, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, in terms of like growing as a trio and growing as a group together like in your early stages did you find that it would, was harder in Scotland than it would have been in say the US or Norway mm. but I don't know if every scene is different I mean my understanding actually of the US is that it's incredibly difficult to make it there because there's actually no there's, there's no for, funding for anything yeah, yeah. 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 no support yeah. And also there's millions of really good musicians. Not that there aren't loads of good musicians mm. in Scotland, obviously, but... Yeah, I think living mm. in Scotland certainly shaped what we do because, you know, if we, if we, you know, if we came up in the USA or, or we stu- are we all with the same people but studied in London or something, well, we might not be playing together, but we might not be doing the Scottish thing as well. Mm. So living in Scotland would really shape the music that we play. Yeah, um, I also think being in a smaller scene can be beneficial because you're more visible more quickly like if if we were in London mm-hmm. there'd be so many musicians that um yeah I, I think in Scotland we were given a lot of opportunities quite quickly just to be like oh that's like a band that actually does stuff like nice yeah, uh, yeah. The, at that time there maybe weren't that many there are, no, there are more now don't yeah. They? yeah yeah and also in London like or somewhere like London there's so many musicians that we might have been more tempted to play in more different Lineups, you know. Yeah, I, mean? mm. I think you don't get that many bands that are together for as long as we've been together. I think perhaps um, we were quite attractive initially in the sense that when we, as I say, we were a band that got, uh, um, that were doing stuff, and we were also quite recognisable with the kind of the Scottish thing as well. Mm. So it was quite a quick, like, oh, they do that, and it's quite recognisable, and then um, mm. that helped us. I think so. Yeah, there were definitely, definitely, we had really good opportunities in Scotland. Um, even even though, even though I'm saying. It could be better, but I think we were we were definitely really lucky we to have lucky. support from like mm. really good people. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Did you three meet while studying uh, at university together? Yeah. Mm. Right. Yeah, Where were you studying? Uh, at the Royal Conservatoire in Glasgow. Oh wow! Okay. That's Scottish place. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what is your creative process like when you're writing new music? Because you're you say that you naturally have a lot of these influences. Um, do you have influences from uh, specific musicians or from your life, or is it more organic? Um, well, I think I think I think influence is isn't something that you really think about actually in a lot yeah. of ways. Uh, mm-hmm. I think I, I just listen to the music that I like to listen to, um, and then when you write, you kind of uh, stuff from, like just naturally comes in from from that. And it does happen occasionally where like, I listen to a certain tune and think, oh, it would be really cool to write a tune that is similar to that, and I've definitely done that. But, yeah, generally I think I like to, I like to just sit at the... If I'm trying to write something, I'll sit at the piano, um, maybe improvise for a bit, see if I can come across like a, a good idea, and then once you've got like a, a strong thing that you think is going to make... that you think you could turn into a good tune, then you turn it into a good tune. Like every, every tune that I've written, I can kind of pinpoint to one thing one like little nugget that kind of started started it started the process and then generally taking it to the other two I like to leave it pretty open usually just teach the tune by ear actually rather than unless it's really complicated maybe I'll write it out um, but if I can I'll teach it by ear and I think that makes a makes a difference actually because then they can kind of come up with their own parts and it becomes a a trio tune rather than just a tune that I've written for, for everyone else. Right, yeah. it leaves more room to, to improvise to make it your own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. It develops on gigs as well, definitely, like the yeah. tunes, you know, if we, like stuff we play now that we recorded maybe like two years ago, we play it quite differently now, yeah. just from playing it yeah. a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, like if you, some of the tunes that you've seen you, you listen to in the album, you might hear, I don't know if you're going to be at the concert today, but if you, um, it may be completely different, you know, so that, that happens quite a lot, mm-hmm. um, which is nice. Mm-hmm. And so what would you say has been the most rewarding experience of your career so far? Uh, oh, it's really hard, that's a hard question to answer. Um, I don't know, what, what do you think? Rewarding as in, kind of, 
like spiritually rewarding or kind of <laughs> financially uh, rewarding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, I say spiritually. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. The one that's come to mind is like. One, I think one of the first international trips we did was Oslo Jazz Festival in like 2018. Um, we were there for mm. a full, pretty much a full week. They did this showcase thing where you do a few small concerts. Uh, and yeah, like just getting to see so much music while we were there. Mm. I remember that being like a really inspiring week. Yeah, yeah. So. that was really cool. I really liked that actually. Yeah, I would probably say we did this gig recently in, uh, in London, first gig at the London Jazz Festival. Our first gig in, in London in absolutely ages. And I think. Um, just from like maybe from like a career standpoint, it was like comparing if you pair, compared that gig, uh, which was in like a sort of big room to like uh, about I don't know three hundred three hundred fifty people or whatever. So the first time we played in London, when it was just like in a tiny basement room for like 50, 60 people or whatever. Oh, that was quite that was quite cool, I think. And that and that felt like a I think that was just a really fun gig as well. It felt like we played well then. So yeah, I would say that. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. I think really Queen's Hall in Edinburgh as well. Queen's Hall, yeah. that was a really good one. Yeah. Album yeah. Cake, that was great. That was really yeah. good. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Do any of you have a specific musician or multiple musicians that you really look up to that you feel have sort of shaped your idea of jazz music? I mean, I, I, always, I always say Keith Jarrett for this, for this question, just because mm-hmm. it's, well, it's true. Um, I think I really like... He... Um, He's this American pianist. He's very, he's very. He doesn't play anymore now, but, um, but he used to do these these concerts where he would go on the, on stage, uh, with no with no plan in mind whatsoever, um, and just com- like completely improvise the whole concert. I think that's just so it's such a cool, idea. And what he comes out with is is like so so beautiful. I think a lot of the time, um, and he sort of there was just I really like the way he talks about improvising and, uh, he sort of talks about it as having like trying to like forget that you know how to play the piano when you go so you have like the most blank slate possible uh yeah i just think the way he approaches playing i really really admire yeah i would say um so what is the best advice you could give to aspiring jazz musicians because obviously we're a student-run newspaper so there's a lot of like aspiring musicians in our school Mm -hmm. and do you have any advice for them especially jazz pianists and musicians um I think I think the main thing is 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 don't maybe don't 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 worry about don't don't worry I suppose would be the main the main thing I think ja, ja, I think a lot of people when they start playing jazz it's it's like a really steep learning curve I think um, and you do have to have a bit of a bit of patience maybe um, but if you if you keep practicing and you keep listening to stuff and if you really love the music you you will get good it's not it's not to do playing jazz isn't to do with with talent or like how naturally gifted you are it's to do with kind of just wanting to doing it uh, wanting to do it and doing it yeah and if you do it you will you will get there yeah and i think like finding your own way into it as well and finding the music that you like to listen to and uh, uh yeah and just being open to it as well i think play with other people as much as you can and also listen to as much music as you can Mm. Definitely the listener. Definitely that as well. Yeah. Definitely listening, especially if you can't play with that many people. Like listening loads to records and playing with records. That's that's yeah. that's really good. Mm. I think seeking out opportunities to play with as many other people as possible is the.